Greetings, Tritons. Amazing energy. You are beautiful and I see you. I believe that everyone is gold or has the potential to be gold. Gold is an acronym that I created that stands for Genuine, Original, Loving Dreamer. If we have learned anything at all during this conference or during these interesting times that we've been in lately, it is so very important to see things in perspective and to live with compassion. We know that we should be kind to others, but it's something that we often forget when we are wrapped up in the complexity of our own lives and we may forget to notice the beautiful soul sitting next to us or walking alongside. See, we see the world from our own lenses, which hold inherent biases, and it takes compassion to see things in a different perspective. So I invite everyone now to take a collective breath. Breathe in and exhale out. I'd like to share with you a story. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on. The other day while humming along to a Bill Withers song, a man reached out his hand and asked me for a dime to feed his meter on time. At first I thought he called me a dime. For those of you who don't know, per the Urban Dictionary, a dime is a score of the most perfect girl on a beauty scale from one to 10, with one being the least pretty and a dime meaning a 10 indicating perfection in the eyes of men. Nonetheless, I immediately went on the defense. To offend me so blatantly to objectify me, the feminist inside me screamed, this man must be tripping, I'm worth more than a silver piece, I am gold or paper at least. Then I realized what he actually said. And that also got me thinking. Why did this man assume I'd have loose change to lose? Did I look like someone with a heavy coin purse just waiting to give away my hard earned money to a stray? But would he think I was hard pressed for cash if I just walked right on past? This all really bothered me. See, when someone's got you questioning your worth, that's a form of disrespect. I'm worth more than a dime. I am not worth less. I couldn't keep these thoughts to myself. So naturally, I jumped right on the hood of his car, looked him right in the face, eye to eye, and took a deep breath and I said, hey, stranger, look at me. Really see me. Don't try to contain me in your perspective. Use your narrow views to shape me, your past to break me down because you can't begin to relate to what I've been through. See, we each have a past, our story different from the last. So don't approach me like you know me. With a closed mind, you can't see the inside. Wait until I speak, until I share a part of me before you dissect my intellect, question my virtue as if you know what it means to walk in my shoes. Listen with all your ears. Don't mistake these tears for weakness. Strength has infinite forms of measure. And if you choose to assume that I am just like you or when you determine I am somehow different, you block your inner eye from seeing reality, from seeing the real me. And until we learn to hold our review, our judgmental point of view, we will continue to be biased and live divided. See, as children, we are colorblind. It's our parents' eyes upon which we rely to explain the differences. And oftentimes they break it down to the color of our skin. But I am more than just the skin that I live in. I am constantly changing from the inside. Can't you see these tan lines? 
We may find ourselves trying to become something different from what we were meant to be, as if the color of our skin predicts the outcome of our lives, but our cultures were not meant to divide, rather unite us. So break down our defenses and embrace our differences. Don't compare yourself to me. This is not a competition. It's the world we all live in where there is no hierarchy of value. <laughs> we are each unique without rival. Love your neighbor. When I looked him in the eyes once more, I could see that my words, they had struck a chord. He looked back at me with his mouth agape. I mean, he hadn't asked me for my whole life story. He just hit a nerve under the wound inflicted by assumptions that we all fought to make. So I gracefully descended my peace platform, fed a quarter to his meter and walked away giving him at least 10 minutes to think on my two cents spiel for a dime worth appeal. For it won't be long until you're gonna need somebody to lean on, lean on me. Mm. A dime worth appeal was initially written as a letter a love letter addressed dear stranger and signed love your neighbor. The message here is very simple and clear. Let us get it connected and love our neighbor. And now that we are better connected, I'd like to make a confession. When I was a kid about eight or nine, I realized that my classmates' lunches were better than mine. They'd have fruit roll-ups and cheese sticks, pudding cups and cookie dips, while my lunch would literally be peanuts and bananas. I wanted what the other kids snacked. And for once for them to wear the look of envy that I always had. So during first recess, I snuck back in the classroom and grabbed all the goodies from each of their lunch sacks. <laughs> See, one tasty treat wasn't enough. I had to have them all in my pack. When the lunch bell rang, I pulled out my, my treats. I shared them gingerly with a big grin. Felt oh, so special I did. See, in that moment, I was queen of all the sweet treats. <sighs> Till I was caught for the act and my sweet brain lapsed. My lunch bandit days are now part of the past, but I've begun to notice that some of us still live like a lunch looting kid in a mentality of scarcity, shutting down others' progress with our words and our thoughts, breaking bridges of respect, replacing supportive words with cold shoulders and enviousness. Letting the mindset of competition trickle down to our hearts and shadowing our entire being with uncertainty, casting self-doubt in our soul and blurring our vision and making us question since when was our life's mission ever to tear others down? But it doesn't need to be like this. See, when we support another we immediately feel an internal hug from within. And as this love for others grows, so does this love for ourselves. Imagine a world in which we lifted each other up and likewise were lifted up higher and higher by others. Imagine what we could accomplish if we shared our snacks of insight and didn't hoard encouragement. Imagine if we truly believed in our hearts and deep within our souls that there is enough, enough for you, enough for me, and we broke free from this mentality of scarcity. Lived life free from fear of running out of treats. 
Take this lesson from the confessions of a third grade lunch bandit. There is enough for us all. Break free. Live free from the mentality of scarcity. Because there's enough for you. There's enough for me. There is enough. I'm breaking free from the mentality of scarcity. There is enough for you and there's enough for me. These are my confessions. Mm -hmm. These are my confessions. Mm -hmm. I invite you all to sing with me at home or in your office or wherever you may be around the world. I'm breaking free. Repeat after me. I'm breaking free from the mentality of scarcity. There is enough for you and there's enough for me. These are my confessions. Mm -hmm. These are my confessions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful starlings. I can feel your collective energy and it's golden. Thank you for breaking free with me. It's high time to break free from the mentality of scarcity by speaking words of encouragement and understanding that there is enough. In doing so, we can better break free from the scarcity mindset. See, throughout our lives, we have been conditioned to compete, to beat out the competition at all costs because of this mindset that there aren't enough opportunities to go around. But in actuality, I found that we could accomplish so much more when we work together to create, to reach a common goal. First, we create more opportunities. Mm. And second, we achieve something greater than we could accomplish individually, something far greater than ourselves. Advancing equity to me means acknowledging and appreciating the uniqueness within each of us. So rather than looking to mask our own unique attributes or knock others down for their unique qualities, we embrace and we appreciate that which makes us each so special. And I believe that once we own our own unique traits, we are no longer looking to put others down, but rather to lift others up. And this is what leads to connections, what leads to collaborations, what leads to authentic relationships and ultimately to a world of unity. I envision unity and less division. I envision more of us being able to work together for the common good, less destruction. And it comes down to more than just one event or one particular advancement. In order for us to reach this state of unity, it takes light. In order for us to work together and not tear each other's down, it takes confidence in ourselves. And when we are able to tap into what it is that makes us gold, a genuine, original, loving dreamer. We are able to build the confidence to shine our light, to offer up our innate gifts and talents because we now know our worth. So we start to make forward moves intentionally. We begin to plan, we begin to act. And when we shine our individual light, we not only encourage others to do the same, but we build connections. We form authentic relationships and we realize that we can make forward moves independently. We can make those forward moves in independently, but when we work together, we can do so much more. And together we thrive, united, together we thrive. So I challenge each of you here today to speak words of encouragement to yourself and to create a positive affirmation beginning with the words, I am gold because. I am a genuine, original, loving dreamer because. And filling the sentence in with a personal success or skill set. For example, I am gold because I am blessed with the ability to empower confidence in others. As I shine my gold light, I encourage others to shine their light in the same way I am encouraging you now to shine yours. 
And as you shine your gold light, you encourage others to shine their gold light. It's a ripple effect. And together we thrive. Together we thrive. I'm Doc Peace, doctor of pharmacy by trade and empowerment guru. If you would like to connect with me further, I welcome you. More information can be found at docpeaceofmind.com. Again, that's docpeaceofmind.com. Again, you are gold. You are a genuine, original, loving dreamer. So cheers to the gold in each of us. That which we know of and that which has yet to be discovered. Thank you again, Tritons. I'll hand the mic over to the wonderful Natalie Ellers. She'll be closing us off. Shine on. Thank you, Doc Peace. Your message is inspiration. My name is Natalie Ellers. I'm the Senior Executive Director of Alumni Engagement at UC San Diego. This fourth year of the Triton Leaders Conference is concluding, but the messages, the ideas, and the moments continue with each of us. Over the past two days, we have come together as a community to discuss advancing equity. From the closing session, from the opening session, where you heard from esteemed Chancellor Coleslaw and UC President Drake about how they are leading our institution to promote the values of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Each of our presenters, panelists, and keynotes have shared their personal and UC San Diego stories, their perspectives, and their vision for a more equitable future. Throughout this conference, we have experienced moments, a moment to contemplate the intersectionality of identities, understanding that gender, racial identity, sexual orientation, all impact how we thrive in the world, a moment to learn that preferred pronouns save lives, and that activism includes self-care. A moment to consider that environmentalism and social justice are interconnected. A moment to pledge to break the conspiracy of silence around microaggressions and confront racism whenever we encounter it. A moment to own our entrepreneurial might and see our, our ethos of inclusion creates new possibilities for so many. A moment to understand how mentors help us see a future that we can't imagine. And a moment to celebrate that we as Tritons, each in our own way, can and do advance equity. Egalité, liberté, fiancé. I would like to thank all of our incredible speakers throughout these past days. Dr. Michael Drake, President, the University of California, Chancellor Padit Kolsla, Vice Chancellor Becky Pettit, Associate Vice Chancellor Cheryl Harrelson, Alumni Board of Directors President Kimberly Phillips Bohm, and all the members of our Alumni Board, our keynotes, Kara Desert, Alondra Nelson, Doc Peace. Thank you to our session moderators presenters and panelists, as well as all of our Triton Leader Conference Committee members and our entire staff. And thank you to you, our attendees, for your interest and engagement in such an important topic. I hope you have found a renewed sense of purpose and learned ways in which you can advocate and advance equity within your own spheres of influence. And always remember that as alumni, your sphere of influence includes UC San Diego staying involved with our mission to support and mentor students, and staying engaged as devoted and valued alumni volunteers. I invite you to join us at one of or several of our upcoming events, and stay tuned in May, where I hope you will all participate in our Youth Care campaign and join us for Alumni Celebration Weekend. Though this concludes our conference, the work of advancing equity goes on. Thank you, and go Tritons.